Hey y'all, in this video, I'm gonna share why email is so important when it comes to raising money for your nonprofit. Let's get into it. Hey there, this is Tiffany with Boss on the Budget. I help people start their nonprofits and raise money from the ground up. So if you need help with your new nonprofit or your super small nonprofit, make sure you are subscribed to this channel because I make videos just for you. And today I want to talk about using email marketing as a way to help supercharge your fundraising. So in this video, I'm talking about why it's important for you to do email marketing and I'm talking about it in comparison to social media. All right, because some people will say, oh, you can just raise money through social media and focus a lot on raising money through their social media channels and neglect an email list. So I'm talking about today, like three reasons why you should really reconsider that and make sure you focus also on email marketing. And the reason why I wanted to talk about email is because I think that it is underutilized for new nonprofits. And I think that a lot of people who start their nonprofits don't realize the power of having an email list and being able to speak to and nurture relationships through email. So I'm going to break some of that down in this video today. So I'm going to talk about email marketing, what it is, you can have a better understanding of what I talk what I'm talking about when I say that. And if you wait to the end, I'm going to share some tips on picking the right email marketing system for you. But the bulk of this video is really me talking about three reasons why it's so important for you to be paying attention to email and doing email marketing, especially as a new nonprofit. So let me explain what I'm what I mean when I say email marketing. I just mean that you have a list of emails and names of people who have engaged with your organization. Either they've given to you or they've signed up for your newsletter on your website or you collected their information from some kind of in-person event and you have stored all of these emails in these contacts and you can market to them, but it's a different term when you know, you're know you a nonprofit, but you can send messages to them through email. Now, typically when you're doing this kind of messaging, you're not doing it just like through Gmail or something like that. You're using an email marketing system, which is a specific software or service that you can use to send mass emails to people. You can do cool things in the emails like drop pictures easily or design them and have pretty templates and all that kind of stuff that give you more flexibility than just sending things straight through Gmail. And also there are limits when you're just using things like Gmail or Outlook to send messages to people. And it's just more frustrating and it's not as user friendly to send mass emails if you're just using like a Gmail account and all that kind of stuff. So in my nonprofit startup workbook, I talk about emailing, I talk about like, what to do with setting up your website domain and why it's so important. So if you have not downloaded that workbook, I'm linking it below. You can purchase it by going to my website. And if you have questions about that, you can also leave a comment below this video. So when I say email marketing, it's just a service that you typically have to pay for, but some of them are free to start out with where you're using it to send mass emails to people. But it's also helpful because it helps you to segment and when i say segment it means you can send only certain emails to certain people who have certain behaviors or certain attributes so maybe you have a list of people who are former and current board members and you want to send an email only to them well you can easily tag or segment those people so you can just send an email their way or maybe you only want to send an email to people who didn't give in the last 12 months and you want to kind of re-engage them, then you can use your email marketing system to specifically target them. So that's what I mean by email marketing. And let's talk about three reasons why you should be considering this for your nonprofit. The first reason why it's important is because using email marketing helps you better control who sees your content and who gets your information. And I'm saying this specifically when I'm comparing it to social media, because a lot of uh, people who start their nonprofits will use social media because it's free, 
right? And I absolutely agree. You should be using social media for your nonprofit because it levels the playing field and it allows you to access people in a way we've never had before. So you absolutely should be using social media, but sometimes people only rely on social media as a way to connect and contact people. And if, for example, their social media page was shut down or something happens, you lose access to those, those people, how can you communicate with them? How can you get messages to them? A lot of times when you're using Facebook or uh, Instagram or TikTok, you're at the mercy of the people who are creating the algorithm. And you also can't really dictate what they see or when they see it. Sometimes on Facebook, people never see your post. You just have to continue to post a certain way. You have to be consistent and then maybe sometimes people will see it. So if you want people to, to more consistently see the messages that you're putting out and have a little bit more control, email is good for that because you can send messages out and pretty much you'll, you'll be sure it's going to hit everyone's inbox. Right? There's nothing, unless it's like a bounce back or something like that, or it goes to somebody's junk mail, it's going to go and people have the potential to see it. Now, that doesn't mean that people are going to open your email, though. And that's the other thing. You have to make sure you have compelling subject lines and you have to send enough messages because people sometimes don't see it. So you have to be consistent about the messages you send out. But there's a lot more control and a lot more possibility of people seeing your messaging when you're using email versus using social media. The second reason why you should be considering email is because it's a great way to build and nurture relationships with people. Now, a lot of what I know about marketing, especially like gaining trust and building relationships with people who don't know you online is from a lot of people who do marketing for for-profit businesses. And whether you realize it or not, there's a lot to be learned about how marketing happens in the commerce space or in the for-profit business space that you can use and you can co-op in the nonprofit space. And one of the things that a lot of social media marketers talk about is selling or talking to people through the DMs, right? It goes down in the DMs. But the purpose of them talking about that is because when you're able to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, it increases the likelihood that they'll trust you and it increases the likelihood that they'll respond to you or they'll eventually purchase from you. So if you flip that on the side of the nonprofit, if you're able to develop closer, tighter, relationships with people, then you're able to build trust with them quicker and get them to donate. But I'm just going to be honest. In order to do that consistently, to see like who likes your post and reach out to them and talk to them through the DMs and all that kind of stuff, to be able to do that consistently when you have no staff, you're working with volunteers, you barely know how to use social media anyway. <laughs> to do that is cumbersome. It's a lot. It's important to do to build relationships with people, but it's just not always practical. But the reason why I like email is because it's an easier way to build relationships and doing direct connections with people. And I will use Boss on a Budget as an example. A lot of times when I send out email newsletters, I'll often say, reply back if you agree with this or reply back and give me a response or I want to hear from you. What do you think about this? Reply back. And every week somebody replies back to the emails. Now I'm sending emails to thousands of people, but there are people who are so inspired or they're just compelled to say something that they actually hit reply and they actually respond to me. And then when I see those messages, I respond back. Right. And so I'm building a relationship through email, but all I did was send one mass email and then I was able to engage more directly with the people in email. And I'll just say this. It is a it's much easier and low stress way of developing relationships with people so that you can learn about why they support your organization. You can hear about what they're passionate about and you can figure out how to leverage them for your organization. You can do this not just for getting people to donate, but if you're looking for board members, if you're looking for volunteers, if you're looking for people to make connections for you, this is how this works. When you begin to talk to people as individuals and see them as people and engage them that way, they become engaged with you and they trust you and they want to help and support you. So that was a really long-winded way of me saying that 
Email is a great way to nurture relationships. It's less stressful, it's less cumbersome than talking through the inbox and the DMs on on your social media. And let's not talk about like all the different social media channels that are out there. As I'm recording this video, there's just one new one that popped up <laughs> like in the last week and it's a lot to maintain. But through email, it's streamlined and it's just easier. So I really encourage you to think through sending emails regularly to build relationships with people and not just sending emails when you need something or when you have a request that is not the way you build relationships with anybody it's you talking to people you sharing about your organization you showing interest in the people who are on your list and then they will begin to respond to you and the third reason why you should be using email marketing is very simple not everybody is on social media but best believe the majority of people have an email and so if you want to connect with certain people, if you want to learn more about them, nurture those relationships that I just talked about in point number two, then you got to have their contact information. You've got to have a way to communicate with them. And email is one of the easiest ways you can do. Some people may not willingly give up their phone number. Or they may not willingly give up their mailing address, but they'll more willingly give up their email because if they're tired of seeing your messages, they can just unsubscribe. They still have a lot of control. It's really hard to unsubscribe from junk mail in the postal mail. <laughs> and I'm talking from experience. I'm tired of seeing the same junk mail being mailed to my house. It's really hard to unsubscribe from people calling you incessantly, even if you block numbers, you know what I mean? But it's easier to do that through email and it gets people more control. Or you may be dealing with a demographic who is not on social media or they may have social media accounts but they don't use it or they don't like to do business or they don't like to engage in certain things on social media or they use their social media for very specific things and not what you're trying to do. Like you don't know, it's a wild card, right? And the demographic you, you want to reach may be on social media, but they not may not be on a platform that you've been able to leverage or you've been able to master yet. And so there, there may be a whole group of people that you're trying to reach, but you're unable to reach them because you just social media isn't the best route for you. But you can get people's emails <laughs> and you can do that multiple ways, especially when it comes to what's called lead generation. So you can have what's called a lead magnet on your website where people who come on your website may be interested in something you want to share. And in exchange for getting that information, they give you their email. Or if people who are not very active on social media, when they are active, you are introducing them to your organization and asking them to give their email in exchange for some information they're interested in. So even though they may not engage on social media, you know, once you get their email, you can start communicating them with, with them more regularly. Or if you are doing an in-person event or you're presenting somewhere or you're vending at a fair, you can collect people's contact information right there. You can get their emails without even engaging with them on social media. So there are ways you can get your email that you can get around on social media. Now, I know I just heard a sigh of relief from a lot of people who watch this because a lot of my followers do not like social media. And a lot of you guys tell me this directly. Let me just say this. You need both. You honestly do. You really do need a presence on social media, but you also need a website. You also need an email marketing system, right? You also need other ways to raise money besides just asking individuals. So it's just all in your overall strategy. So I'm not trying to pit email versus social media, but I am making the case that it is really important that you use emails, you leverage emails to speak to your potential donors and your supporters. Okay, so I promised at the end of this video to share some tips on picking an email marketing system. And don't get mad at me because there are so many different email marketing systems. I cannot recommend to you what's the best one for you. But I would just suggest that when you're picking an email marketing system, don't get something that's so robust that you're not going to use it. There are really powerful email marketing systems out here and they cost, <laughs> they cost a lot of money, upwards of hundreds of dollars a month 
just to use them as an email marketing tool. And as a small and new nonprofit, especially if you have a, a smaller list, having all the bells and whistles is not really important in the beginning. Really, you just want a way that you can communicate with people, send mass emails, and be able to tag different people to figure out who's who, like who are donors and who are board members and who are volunteers. So when it's time to send out different kinds of messages, you can do that efficiently. So my biggest piece of advice is don't go for like the major players. Don't go for all the bells and whistles starting out. Start small and start simple. There are some email marketing systems where you can start out for free. Some services are moving away from providing a lot of free stuff, which is so unfortunate. But there are some email marketing systems like MailChimp, like MailerLite. If you have a very small list, you can use them for free as of 2023, but that also may shift. So just keep that in mind. So are you going to be using email marketing for your nonprofit? I hope the answer is yes. Tell me your thoughts in the comments and also tell me what you learned by watching this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you need more information about starting a nonprofit, make sure you visit me at bossinabudget.com. Otherwise, thank you again for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.